want to give you a sense of what China is, uh, a little bit about the sense of this country. We all, we all hear about China every day in the news, and sometimes it's frightening, sometimes it's very uh, exciting. But I'd like to give you an insight in terms of the product and marketing challenges. So, this is no, no news to you, right? Second largest economy in the world. Let's look a little bit about the facts. Firstly, China by numbers. It's big, the history is long. The oldest civilization in the world. One in five people are Chinese. The economy is the second largest, as we've just seen. But it's still a relatively poor country. Average income with a GDP per person of Botswana. Huge cities. The world's largest city is Chongqing. You've probably never heard of it. 32 million people and it's diverse in its population. But for us who work and live in China, the clearest way of expressing our understanding of China is as follows. One country, two worlds. Across all dimensions, China feels like a country pulling in two different directions. One, trying to look towards the future. Secondly, weighed down by its past and present. And let's take the first example, the economy. One is the world of skyscrapers, like Shanghai, trying to be the major capital city in Asia. But the other is a 650 million rural population who live on less than two US dollars a day. It's also one country in two worlds in terms of society. Across China, age groups in rich and poor cities, modern influence are having huge impacts on traditional Chinese life. One example is the parent-child relationship. In the past, the most important value for a child was to respect and care for their parents. But now, with the one-child policy, this has been put on its head. Two parents, four grandparents, all looking after one child. The youngest generations are made of the, what we call little emperors, with values at times in conflict with those of their parents before. But the China challenge is not only about scale, it's also about pace. As it says here, everything is changing every minute. 50% of the people who will be US dollar millionaires in five years time have next to nothing today. Turbocharged by global economic forces and by sheer weight of numbers, China is ripping up our rule book. Shanghai, 20 years ago, not a skyscraper, let alone of all in China. In 20 years, the city grew by 50%. Seven million new residents came in. By 2025, China will have 10 New York cities of today. So it's big and it's fast, but it's also complex. The one child generation is taking to the stage. They bring with them a sense of entitlement combined with a fierce impatience and a whole lot of pride. Chinese people have never been so proud of their country, and tomorrow will be even more so. And with that change has come consumers who want to create their own identity. They want to be different. Consumers have developed a sense of individuality. And they have become increasingly sophisticated with their favorite brands. And they look to connect to brands that have personalities that can help them from their own individuality. In just two years' time, China will have approximately 600 cities with 100,000 or more affluent consumers. Some of these cities will have more affluent consumers that outrank most of your cities here in Australia. Managing di this diversity across geography, and across these cities is key to winning in this marketplace because this is where the growth will come from. And so the China middle class is on the rise. The next decade will bring an additional 270 million consumers into this segment. By 2020, China will have the world's top middle class consumer market and China will be the major market in the 21st century. By 2030, China will account for 20% of all global spending. Millions of newly affluent consumers 
not bearing the higher living costs of the top tier cities in China will have a lot of disposable income. China will be the major market of the 21st century. Now, of course, as the profile of our consumer changes, so does his or her requirements. I want to highlight three trends to you. Firstly, the status value of brands and products is critical to the expiring. Brand association rapidly becomes less about logos and labels. It's more about personal style and identity. Secondly, there's a constant flux between the relationship between consumers and the origins of the brand. On the one hand, we are witnessing a very rapid decline in brand nationalism of Chinese consumers because they become more sophisticated. They want to be international. They want to wear those luxury brands that the West wear. Finally, consumers in China increasingly demand products that contribute to their tangible success. And of course, in almost any category, you can think there's an explosion of choice and competition. As it says here, we're all fighting for the attention of our consumers. But it is also a struggle for their personal association and loyalty. Quite simply, what happens in the minds of the people we are discussing will determine the commercial fate of some of the world's largest brands and companies. You want a business challenge? You've got it in China. So how does a multi-brand like Adidas stay relevant in this environment with the rapidly changing consumer landscape? In China, Adidas is not only competing with other international sports brands, we are also competing with local homegrown heroes. In fact, there are 60 sportwear brands in China. I don't know any market in the world that has so many sport brands, and they're all gunning to win. To beat them, we need to be honest with ourselves, and we need to get to the game and get our marketing strategy right. So how do we compete with the hearts and minds of the Chinese consumer? We believe it's really all about understanding our consumer, who they are, what they aspire to, and what they need from us. Before I close, let me give you a very brief sense of what I see as the key challenges for the future of China. We have scarcely begun to contemplate the full implications of China's rise, culturally, environmentally, linguistically, ethically, and above all, militarily. Our whole world will change in our generation. So let's talk about China and its future. Everybody is talking about China somewhere and somehow. And just to emphasize again, China will be the world's largest economy by 2020. China is a double-edged sword. On one hand, huge pent-up demand. On the other, Chinese consumers are fickle. Brands who perform in other markets can fail in China. China is different. Not impossible, not confusing, not hard, just different. And as the old adage goes, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs>